Could you have picked a more challenging topic? You, uh, you have a woman who disappeared from public view in 1941 when she was only 23 years old. Where does a biographer even begin? And more importantly, maybe why? You know, that those are two great questions. Um, why is easier to answer. Um, back in 2005, I saw Rosemary's obituary in the newspaper, and it was like a three-paragraph obituary in the Boston Globe. And for some reason, it just hit me. I had been vaguely aware of Rosemary, and of course, I was very aware of the Kennedy family, having grown up in New England. And I just, I just thought, oh, this life, you know, what happened to her? And as a women's historian, you know, my antenna went up right away, like, why don't we know more about her? So I tucked it in the back of my mind, and I was working on another book project, but I just had this sense that I should investigate her life, and that might be my next project. Mm -hmm. So when I did start researching her life, it might have been a little bit of naiv naivete on my part, thinking I'd be able to unearth all this information, and it won't be any problem, and I could write about this beautiful, young woman and, you know, about what happened to her. Uh, the process took a lot longer than I thought because the record was, you know, a little bit spotty. But over the years, more and more papers became available, so it made it easier. But it is a challenge to write about somebody who disappears and who leaves few papers behind, but it is possible. Tell us what you think about Rosemary's life before the lobotomy in 1941. Um, was she a happy child? Was, uh, was she integrated into the life of that family? Um, Rosemary was an adorable child, happy, um, but also she struggled and suffered in trying to compete with her much more capable siblings. Uh, she was integrated into the family when she was home, and her siblings did a great job trying to accommodate her disabilities. They um, would play sports with her, uh, they would go sailing with her, and they would um, take the helm but help her be part of that sailing. And tennis, all the sports activities that they were all capable of doing by themselves, she needed help, but they accommodated her, which of course influenced uh, Eunice as an adult to start the Special Olympics. She knew that sports was an important aspect for every human being, but uh, also for people with, with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so she was happy on the one hand. On the other hand, um, she was very unhappy because of the struggles that she faced. And her parents also sent her off to many different schools over a period of 10 years. And that was very hard on a, on a young child, uh, teenager, young adult woman who was constantly separated from her family who she loved very, very much and wanted to be with. So her life had bright moments, but also a lot of struggles. 